Hey there, welcome to our YouTube channel and our vlog. My name is Rebecca and our business name is Joliere and we breed Bernadoodles and in the future we're going to breed Bernese Mountain Dogs. So if you saw our last video, um, Izzy just had a new litter and it's been a little while, it's been almost a week now. So it's about time that I give an update. Um, the first, whenever a litter is born, Life is really hectic and crazy and we have we don't get a lot of sleep and so it's really hard to give updates in a timely manner but now that things have kind of settled down a little bit I think I've got enough time to actually shoot and edit a video. All right so here I am with Izzy and her new puppies um, just to tell you a little bit about them these are F1B Bernadoodles so F1 is when it's 50% poodle 50% Bernadoodle or Bernie's Mountain Dog. When it's F1B, the B means back cross. So in this instance, they've been back crossed to one of the parent breeds um, to a poodle. So these puppies are 75% poodle. So I'm gonna go ahead and introduce you to the puppies one by one. And let's start with the most obvious one right here. This is Miss Rose. So Rose is the only red colored puppy. It's okay. She's red with lots of pretty white on her face and chest and head. Okay, this puppy is Tulip, which I... <laughs> think is fitting because if I can get her she's got pink on her lips or white on her lips so she's super cute she also has white on her chest and feet okay baby okay so that's tulip who's next Izzy let's see here this one here this is violet and Violet is another black puppy with lots of white. I really like her face. Her <laughs> white nose. And then she's got a little stripe and then half, like half of a collar around her chest. And then also, <laughs> hey baby, look at her cute little feet. She's got like little stockings on her feet. And then this puppy is Daisy. So Daisy is the last black and white one that, and she has the most white of the three black and white ones. So this is, so Daisy has a white collar all the way around her neck. And look at the squiggly line on her forehead. I think it's so cute. But that white extends all the way down her, her belly and her feet and her cute little nose. And she's sweet. That's Daisy. Mommy, I feel hurt in me. And then there's one more puppy here, and that's Lavender. Yay! He's a male, and he is a phantom. So phantom is brown and black. He's got a little bit of white on his chest. So not enough to call him a tricolor, but, um, but definitely a really pretty puppy. I really like the <laughs> like his coloring and he's the only phantom which is crazy because we've had other litters where we almost only have phantoms so we got a lot of interesting variety in this litter so if you're keeping track that was only five puppies and if you watch the video Seriously, won't be. If you watch the video of their birth, you'll know that there was 10 puppies born. So I've got a little story to tell you. So this spring we were supposed to have three litters of puppies. Um, Winston here, he's the dad. And we had Akira, this one right here, Izzy, the mom, and over there, and Denali, another one of our Bernese Mountain Dogs. We're all supposed to have puppies this, uh, right around the same time. Um, in our defense, it was Christmas time, so we didn't really do much to facilitate their breeding. We kind of just left Winston with them. And um, in the past, that's worked out. Like, he's a really dependable stud. 
but this time around it didn't work out so well um, Denali did not get pregnant at all Akira the jury's still kind of out on her come here Akira come here okay so what happened with Akira I think was a false pregnancy a false pregnancy happens in dogs because in the wild only the matriarch will actually give birth to a litter and but all the other females will go through a false pregnancy so that they start producing milk to help feed the puppies in that litter. Come here, come here. Come here. Come on. Good girl. Okay. So their their nipples will get bigger and they'll even produce milk and sometimes they'll even their tummies will even grow. Um, we didn't notice the carrot's tummy growing at all, but she did show other signs of pregnancy. So we had her inside, and at one point, not too long ago, not too long before Izzy had her puppies, it even seemed like she went through like a false labor. So poor Akira went through all the all the symptoms of pregnancy without getting any puppies. And meanwhile, Izzy has this beautiful litter of 10 puppies. So we had this idea of seeing if Akira could adopt some of Izzy's puppies. We had several reasons for this. Akira was producing milk and acting super depressed and anxious. Another reason is that Izzy can be on the thinner side typically, but especially with this litter, she just seemed pretty skinny after giving birth. So we want to help her be able to maintain her weight, help Izzy maintain her weight. And so we thought if Akira could adopt some of the puppies, it would make her happier and help Izzy feed, because 10 puppies is a big litter. It would help Izzy feed the puppies and keep her weight up. So a couple days after the puppies were born, I set up this whelping box and moved some puppies over to here. And I was super nervous because, you know, what if Akira did something weird or didn't take good care of them? So um, we started off by monitoring their weights. Um, I monitored Izzy's puppy's weights along with the puppies that we gave to Akira. And now we are a few days in and the good news is that everybody is thriving and doing amazing and Miss Akira is much happier. It's so crazy because I wasn't sure if Akira would have the right instincts and hormones to actually raise a litter and take care of a litter of puppies, but she, as soon as she got into the whelping box, started licking them and caring for them just like any mom would it was it was just amazing to watch i wish i had the camera on but we were also you know it was just kind of a stressful time and just uh required a lot of extra work so i didn't want to think about videos but now that we're a couple of days in she's doing amazing taking really good care of them Just hold him. It's all legal. Yeah. So it's just amazing. These are not technically her puppies, but look how attentive she is. She's doing so good. All right, so guys, let's take a second to introduce these puppies. Riley, you want to tell us about yours that you're holding? This so Lily is the only Merle, which is amazing because the last litter we had like four of them. Um, so she's the only one with her daddy's coloring. Clover is what we'd call a party. And look at his cute eyebrow. I just can't get over it. Hold on, turn him around, Jordan. Okay. Look at his cute face. So he has... Um, He's got that eyebrow on that side, and then he actually has some phantom markings on this side that you can barely see. So if he was um, black or brown all over and didn't have so much white, he would have the tan points like a Bernie's Mountain Dog has. Okay, Jordan, you can let you can let that one nurse. Hey, which what one? one? What other? What other? Oh. Whichever one. I don't know her name, so I'm just gonna say this is. <laughs> That's Aster. 
This is Aster. He's a boy, and he's the only tricolor, only classic tricolor. Can you hold him still? He's got pretty um, white all the way around his neck, and then obviously the, the brown spots on his cheeks and face. So this is Sunflower. Yeah, and he's a boy. And he's a boy. I think he's hungry. But he is a cream party, isn't he? All right, here. Let's let him nurse. He's hungry. It was so adorable nursing. No, you see how they're all kind of holding still and their tails are holding pretty straight? That is what happens when the milk lets down. So when they first start nursing, they're all moving and wiggling about a lot, and that encourages the milk to let down. And then once the milk lets down, they just hold really still. But this is super encouraging. Walter! Don't kick the puppy! <laughs> this is super encouraging to me because it means that they're, they're getting milk, they're swallowing, they're drinking, and uh, they're, that's going to mean that they're going to thrive and do well with Miss Akira. Walter, why? Why do you have to put your foot on the puppies? <laughs> what it's like trying to work around a toddler. Goodness. It's all right, Jordan. You can see how Lily's tongue is wrapped around real nice. That's a really good suckle. Really good latch. And when they have got when they've got like little dimples on their cheeks, it means they've got a really good latch. Clover is already. Oh, oh yeah. Just let him go. It's okay. You just can't resist, can you, Riley? I want. So again, if you're keeping track, that would be four puppies with Akira, five with Izzy. So that's nine. If you saw the last video, um, you'll know that we ended the video by saying that she had ten healthy puppies. Unfortunately, one of the puppies, um, Poppy, we had named him, he was doing okay for the first couple of days and then started to fade. Um, fading puppy syndrome is just when they, they get, they start getting cold, they don't, they're not moving around as much, they're not nursing as well. Um, so we started to notice him um, feeling, he just felt thin and felt smaller than the rest and not as strong and I kept trying to get him to nurse and kept trying to watch him nurse and he was doing okay for a little while and then yesterday not yesterday the day before he was about three days old he really started to decline so as the day went on I finally decided to take him bring him upstairs and try bottle feeding him and try to take a few extra measures to keep him warm so we had like a rice sock and trying to, just trying to keep him warm and bottle feed him and we gave him sugar water just in case he was hypoglycemic. Um, towards the evening he started having seizures and and it was just kind of a kind of a slow decline, slow sort of slow decline after that. Uh, we did stay up with him through the night and kept trying to bottle feed him and do everything that we could, but there had to have been something something internally wrong with him because he just he didn't make it by about two in the morning he uh he passed away so it's always really sad we hate losing the puppies um and it's just it's one of those things like no matter how long we do this and how many times it happens it still breaks our hearts and kind of puts a dark cloud over the whole family um but I, we found a statistic while we were researching different things and saw that 20% of puppies don't make it to four, four weeks. So if that's the case, then we're doing a lot better. Our puppies are doing a lot better than that. That being said, it's still heartbreaking and we still hate to lose a puppy. 
So after all that, we're still trying to look on the bright side and be really thankful for the nine healthy puppies that we do have and are trying to have shifted our focus to just um, keeping track of them and watching them and keeping them healthy and raising them to be really good family dogs. Of course, these next few days and weeks, we're gonna have to continue to monitor the puppies and the moms to make sure that they're doing well, but really the, um, the hardest days are past us, I think. Um, usually once they make it to this stage, they're, they're doing pretty good, so. It's hard to give a sales pitch at this point, but I probably should mention that most of these puppies are available. We only have three deposits on the waiting list. So if you're interested in a Bernadette puppy, we're raising them here in our home. They're obviously going to be really good with kids because our kids spend every day with them. And we're going to start them on crate training and potty training. When they're this, this tiny, it's hard to even think about, but in just a few weeks, they're going to start their training um, with those things. So definitely, Contact us. Our best way to get a hold of us is on our website. Um, you could also email me. You can find my email address on the website and let us know if you're interested in a puppy.